see the, you see, you see this Firmino thing, yeah? I think that I think that we're giving Firmino a bit too much for for his um, for his like little teamwork and not enough scoring. You know, I think I think that when are we gonna when are we gonna start saying Firmino? Where's the goals at? Because you're a striker. Oh, where are the goals? Asking that already. Where's oh, the goals? Where are the goals? Well, you've got Liverpool fans saying no, the best striker in it, so they'll let it pass because... No, know. we can't let it pass. Where are the goals? Strikers get judged on goals. Where are your goals, big man? He's not He's not your typical striker, that's the thing. He's not your typical... I feel he's not I that. Get, I get that, but the thing is, they, I think they think he's better than he is because they're midfield. No, he's good. He is very, very good, but I no, just feel... That's what amazes me. No, he's not world class. No, he's not. I don't think he's world class. Mane's world class. I say Mane is. Okay? I think Firmino's a very good like player. He's a very good player. He's technically gifted. He's got a good strike on him. But I don't think he's near world class. I think his the the praise he gets is because the midfield has no creativity. So because of that, he drops in and does all the little stuff that makes it look like oh we need him rather than maybe thinking maybe if we get creativity in the midfield we don't need him and we can get someone who can actually score. Speaking of creativity, Lola, I know you lot of and Sammy, I know you lot have heard um, there's rumours of Thiago. Thiago could be coming to Anfield. That's what I heard. I don't know if it's true. But... Listen. Who <laughs> know me? Everyone knows that I love Thiago, yeah. He doesn't. I, I will never forgive David Moyes for not getting Thiago. But I, let me tell you something. If Liverpool get to your bro, it's going to be problems. Damn sure. Big problem. It's going to be problems. And I don't want to see that, personally. <laughs> I, don't want that. I, don't, I don't want to see that. Yeah. I don't want to see someone like that giving the ball to Mane on a perfect plate. I don't want to see that man give Salah a perfect ball on the plate. Because if that happens, mm. like... Nine out of ten times, these men are banging in goals. Mm-hmm. And that might even even allow Flaminio just to stay up top now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a problem change. if that happens. Yeah, it'll, be, it'll change the game. It'll change the game. I think, like, just like how Bruno Fernandes is coming to United and you've seen actual, you know, sparks, another set of creativity apart from Pogba, Thiago will come in and he will he'll destroy it. He will destroy it. Destroy I'm it. telling you, yeah. it's looking. If if Liverpool do get that kind of player, because to be to be fair now, Liverpool they they won the league now, um, two seasons or no, was it last season that they just won um, Champions League? Mm-hmm. It's like you have to now um, bring in class players to maintain yeah. that level yeah. of of a winning mentality. You can't now go back and try and find these little work these little work courses. To now come and do to come and do your job. Uh, trust me, it's, sometimes you have to bring in the flair, man. To, yeah, like, yeah. Change. You it up. Yeah, you have to. You know, you have to. But I'm telling you, if that happens, yeah, Liverpool, I think we might be in trouble. I wanted to touch on my young gunner, uh, Saka. Oh, then, Saka recently, you know, <laughs> recently he signed his contract. Um, obviously, scored on the weekend against. <laughs> He's another young prospect that I, I enjoy watching. He's kind of been a breath of fresh air for Arsenal as well. I know a lot of Arsenal fans, we love him already. Um, what do you guys think of Saka and like his impact in the Premier League? Oh, excellent. Excellent impacts. I mean, he's done... It was his, his first game, I think, was against Chelsea. If my memory serves me correct. Is it was not Chelsea? I'm not too sure. He played on the... You got that memory as well? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't care about him. Did that's it. Um, but yeah, scratch that view. But yeah, so he's he's been doing his thing, and the one the one transition there that he's made in the last couple of games because he played. I remember he played one game, a few games. He's basically playing wing back. Yeah. Now he's not a wing back. He's known as a forward or inside winger, whichever, or left or right, whatever. Um, which is where I believe his future lies. However, I think it's a case of he's just been taught the defensive side of, of the game and then he can then blossom into the attack. I personally would say don't even waste your time with that because he's got some ability, his movement, and I think it was that game you guys drew. Um, I think it was Sheffield. Oh, yeah. That game, I said, yeah. no, nah, this guy's cold. 
what he was doing in terms of his movement, you don't deserve to. You should have won that match. You should have wrapped it up ASAP. You, didn't, you may not play well because Sheffield just done that old school Sunday league, bam, clatter Arsenal, like old school one, just try to overpower you. Yeah. But with fo- the football mentality and the football um, consistency that you lot could have brought to the table was 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 crazy. I said, no, 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 this game is dirty. Mm. This game is dirty. What he was doing specifically, but it's just that he didn't allow, he didn't see the other side. I don't know where it was. I don't know how he's up. Um, put out your team or whatnot, but then obviously the game after against Wolves, I said, "Yo, this guy is cold. He's cold. This guy is cold. cold." So he's one to watch. I mean, what's his name? Was it guy DT? He must have said something about he's or was it D or was it um the other one? They were back yeah. again. That guy. What's his name again? Yeah, troops. oh um, yeah, no. troops. I think one of them two said he's going to be on the level of Mbappe and stuff, and I said. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's what I said, come on, man. Like, what, 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 let the guy breathe, bro. When I hype my kids, I like to be... Yeah, I got your kids, please. I'm more hype here, yeah, but realistic as well. Like, for me personally, Saka, at least for his size at the moment, is a left... I, I think he's best in, as a the left side of a midfield three. Mm. Because I think mm. size-wise, I think he's good. He, obviously, he can play left back. He, play, he can play all down the left side. But I think for the way he plays, he's better coming further from deeper. So I wouldn't put him left wing. And he also doesn't have, he hasn't got like the, let's say the, the skill, the skill set in terms mm. of like tricks for like 1v1 proper to mm. stay at left wing, at least not until he proper like grows. Mm. Left centre mid, left centre mid, yeah. He drives, he, he, he's strong for it. Like he's, he is strong for his size. He's techie on the, on the ball. He, he's got, he can pick out a pass. He's very intelligent. And it's like, it's perfect for him. Even him playing on the right, which I don't like personally. So I don't think he's good on the right. I don't think he was even good in that Wolves game. But the, the point is, he did it. That he did it well there as well. And it's like so he can more or less, if, we, if need be, he mm. can do it as well. Mm. So him being like the fact that he signed a, signed a contract here, yeah, the way I was gassed. Because I'm saying, if we lost him to someone else in the prem, I would have gone to the Emerson and burned down myself. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> how, how much is he on? How much is he on? I don't care. He's eight, he's eight, 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 eight. That's Probably. Which I'm fine with. It's, That's mad. No. But I, I, do you know? What? You know what? It, what this Arsenal team, yeah, and I can see what um, I can kind of see what Arsenal is trying to do, and I agree with Niv that in terms of um, I think maybe he might be playing Saka more defensively just to understand the game because, that like he said, that won't be his um position because you have T. What was his name? Was his name Tierney there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tierney, something like that. Yeah. So um, I think that for Saka. Yeah. I see him. I see him being like a Sterling type player, just in terms of like size. So I feel like he might like grow. Let's say like five eight, five nine, maybe. I think, and then just have to just get him in the gym. I think if you get him in the gym, get stronger, he'll do. He'll do bits. What I like about him is that your young boys are hungry, and I think that is why you are playing better football because. The young boys are chasing down every ball. They're, they're, yeah, like they're um, trying to close down uh, every ball. Obviously, you can see that Arteta is trying to kind of copy the same uh, module as City. Obviously, as expected to a, to a degree, as expected because that's what's going to always going to happen. Every yeah. time that City and Arsenal do play, you're going to find similarities in in playing styles to a degree. Um, but Saka. I would definitely put him in that um, kind of um, list of your Mason Greenwood, your Phil Foden, and um, yeah, and those, yeah, those, well, those two anyway. I would, mm. and Martinelli as well. I'll put them, I'll put Martinelli in there as well. Mm. Well, I think people, you've got an Ellie one, by the way. Some of these United fans to chill. You're attacking a boy who's on crutches. Like, let the boy rest. When some people are like, <laughs> no, but I, that, I, thing, I, like United fans, I think that United fans are getting a bit too excited because obviously Mason Greenwood is doing bits, which is cool. You look, man, you look, United fans can, you know, get gas, but I think on the same, on the same level is that I think that we should also acknowledge that Arsenal have that same kind of talent in, Mar- in Martinelli. Because Martinelli was, was doing bits before he got injured. Let's be honest about that. And I think that if, if he had, if he wasn't injured, I think he'll be banged the ball the same way, if I'm being honest. What's that? So what do you think? Oh me, I'm happy. I'm happy. I, I'm 
I think there was a question about how do we think Arteta's doing and I just think the way he's handled the squad and you can just see that we're kind of growing in confidence, you know. We're not really singling out any players like Mustafi or anything like that anymore. Um, in terms of what you're saying about Saka, I, I I really admire him as a player. I think he's he's got a lot of potential and I just hope he he just stays grounded and he just, you know, just, just pushes forward. But, you know, it's, it's just nice to... It's refreshing to see, like, the youth are are helping us and they're pushing us through. Um, they're helping the likes of your Lacazettes and your Bamiyans because I think there was a bit... Again, it's another thing where there was a lot of pressure on the Bamiyan to just come up with goals, to run through the whole team. Not that he does that all the time, but to do that. So it's nice now we've got Sacco, we've got, like you said, Martinelli. Obviously, he's injured at the moment. Um, Eddie and Ketty, I think he's, he's so good because the Eddie, work rate... The work rate that he has is is mad, and you can see that he's got an eye for goals. So I'm just hoping that he starts knitting a few more goals, um, especially towards the end of the season. Go on. Yeah, I think he'll definitely Eddie. What I like about him is like it is the work rate, and he's very kind of instinctive. So more time, if he sees a flash of a goal, he'll shoot. And yeah. a lot of your target. If he doesn't go in, at least he'll be on target. Mm-hmm. When he's like, he's, like the way Arsenal is clearly wants to do, he's been wanting to press, mm-hmm. and the difference between like why he maybe he's not starting Lacazette is because realistically Lacazette can't press as well. So the energy levels is different. So at least yeah. when he doesn't score the goal, he will press enough that he will get like a Bamiyang in the position to get the goal mm. or someone else and like trigger everything, which is mm. what I'm liking. So the fact that he clearly wants to play 4-3-3, yeah. but he's very much aware that our team have not got have got excuses for that. And mm. so he figured, let me do something else that will protect that entire back line because let's be serious, our defence is, is what it is. But the fact is, he's got, he's got what? How many? He's got like seven clean sheets and 15. With mm-hmm. a defence that everyone was saying can't be coached. He's managed to get David Luiz, Mustafi, Kolasinac, Bellerin, mm-hmm. all these guys to actually keep clean sheets consistently. So it's like that. And obviously, the inclusion of Tierney, who's an actual left back, who actually mm-hmm. knows how to defend, how to deliver, how to attack, mm-hmm. helps in that situation as well. Mm-hmm. And also, it's like back three, realistically, is the best thing for what we have because yeah, David Luiz. Yeah. Issue in a back three. Yeah. Kalazan has an issue in a back three. Mustafi yeah. is like, it's all kind of, it's like, working like I'm one of the ones I'm not going to get like to the point where saying oh, we're going to win all our games, but it's less of a, well, I'm less, I'm less like, like pessimistic about the games as I was like before. Yeah. I mean, going I, to do something stupid. Yeah. I mean, our next two games, we've got what? Leicester's tomorrow. That's going to be a big game. That's a big test. And then we have the North London derby, which is on the weekend. Um, I wanted to touch upon some of the things that Mourinho was talking about his uh, his team and his mind games. I, I don't know if you lot heard where he was saying that he was a bit offended by Arsenal. I think Arsenal made a few comments on on social media, and he didn't like it about um, it's not easy playing at Sheffield Sheffield United, something like that. Here's how you should do it, and they put a clip of obviously Arsenal beating Sheffield United at Bramall Lane. And Mourinho's come out and he said that he doesn't like it, but I think I've heard a few people saying that he's just starting his mind games. And he... of course, of course, you really know that he's starting mind games. Come on, you really know that. Mm. And I think that obviously, like I, I still think that Mourinho is going to do a good job at um, at Tottenham, but obviously, the way the season's come back now, it's not looking too good for him. But I'm not really... For me personally, I've kind of voided this season already. I've kind of just said, anyway, he's, I'm looking. I'm more looking at these kind of games as more of, I don't know, I would say pre-season, personally for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that next season, I think Marino will set up properly. Mm-hmm. I think we'll really set up properly and we'll, we'll see a good Tottenham side. Um, the North London derby is going to be interesting. Mourinho, I know for a fact he doesn't want to lose that game. He can't lose that game. No. Um, so I think he's going to... I'm expecting Tottenham to beat Arsenal because Mourinho has better experience than Arteta mm. and he has and he has a clinical goal scorer in Kane. So I'm expecting Tottenham to beat Arsenal. But because of the, the, the youth in, in Arsenal and, and the level of how on it they are, it's going to be a hard one, I yeah. think. I think that's a draw. I, I personally think out of the two games, Arsenal's getting four points. I don't know why I feel that. I feel like you beat Leicester, 
and he'll draw against Tottenham. I don't know why I feel that one, but that's what I feel. I don't know why I feel that. I don't even know who, who that like, if you're away or not. But I, feel, I don't feel that. We say we're away at Spurs. You're away at Spurs. I think you'll draw it. I don't know why. I don't think you'll get a win. I think it'll be a draw. But I think it'll be a draw where Arsenal dominate, but it'll still be a draw. There's something about Arsenal and Spurs and the fact that Eric Dyer and David Sanchez, uh, David Sanchez, David Sanchez, David Sanchez, sorry. Mm. I don't know what it is. It's Eric Dyer more to me personally, but I don't know his concentration level. I don't know if he's there. Mm. And someone like Abame on something like that or Nketiah, even what you were saying about Nketiah before, I was just going to say, be careful, please. Like, obviously, he's Guardian, cool. That's heritage. That's, blood. That's my cousin. But the problem with that is, yeah, when you get labelled with, oh, he can press, oh, he can go into the channels and blah, blah, he ends up being in a category, I'm talking about Venn diagram stuff now, where he ends up becoming something with Danny Warbeck. I don't want this guy's trajectory to become Danny Warbeck because the guy actually has that instinctive, you know what I mean, that element about him. Because it's, not, it's true, bro. Because a lot of the time, you can go and say this thing about... Pre- as soon as people say press, remember, pressing is at least 50% of your energy to start with. If you're not doing pressing with intent, then it becomes yeah. longer because everyone gets onto you. If you're the leader of the press, then what, what are you doing then? Well, basically what? Scotty Pippen. And then who's going to be the MJ? A Batman or that's- something like that. So he's going to end up being a Robin in this team. And that's the worst situation to be in, especially if you're black, because you, you end up getting marginalized because you're seen, seen as a press man. That's it. I'm yeah, talking about specifically this period, because like realistically, Aubameyang is the, is the guy. So it's like, Eddie will get his goals, but he's also the guy who presses. There's nothing wrong with that at the moment. If he yeah, continues, yeah, yeah. What, what do you right. mean? Well, you got to go get Southampton that, when he presses <laughs> people kind of that. Exactly, but that's what I'm saying. That's, his, that's a world of tight goal, and I don't want to be here. <laughs> Let's be okay, but let's be honest here, because like as a young player, mm. you're gonna have to do yeah, that. The dog work. Yeah, 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 I get that. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. gonna have to kind of do that until you're what established. Until you're established first team member. But I think that even even if you even if he is an established first team member, I think that's how Arteta wants Arsenal to play. I think Arteta wants Arsenal to press further up the pitch to win the ball further up so they don't have to defend as much. Yeah. So I don't think I don't think that pressing is necessarily a bad thing. Mm-hmm. But I don't see Eddie and Kessia being in being in the same category or labelled as a Danny Welbeck. Because no. I only I think that Eddie and Kessia is more clinical than Danny Welbeck. Yeah. He strikes the ball back. Yeah, no, I, I, I see the strikes, I see the technique, and I see, you know, he's, he's like a fox in a box type thing. I saw, I saw him at Leeds. He's done very well in his long run out there and whatnot. So I've seen a few glimpses of him, and I like him. My only thing is, I, I can't lie, I want to sign up for Ghana because he ain't got no fours at the moment. But at the same time, <laughs> I know he's England. Hey, look, if we can get party, he'll, he'll convince him in it. We'll just... Thomas Party, bro, listen, party needs to come to my United. Listen. That's what we need. Because listen, I'm much. actually li- listen. I'm that he's going listen. Arsenal. Don't get it wrong, because his dad said it. He goes Arsenal. <laughs> listen, I've called his dad already. I already spoke to him, so it's mine now. I already know that one. He's going Arsenal, but I'm burning. I already tried to do quick, quick. We need him more than you. Anyway, so no, we need him more than you. We need that. Thomas, Are you okay? Thomas is transition man. That ball scene, bam, dictate. Listen, that guy is cold. You don't ain't got no one to hit. That's the problem. Cool. That's the problem. That's basically like you man's Kante. He's going to be... Literally. Air balls. Oh, He's oh. too cold. Let's type in it, because like, I still don't trust this, 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 this lot here who will get it done. I want to see him in the shirt if I say... Well, in the shirt. That's, this is what I'm saying. The same thing with Sancho. I don't want to see... I don't want to hear nothing until I see him in the shirt. We'll quickly talk about Chelsea. I, I, the thing I like about Chelsea is the fact that you've got this English core and there's, there's so much potential. When you think about like Mason Mount, Tammy... Um, Tomori, um, Reese James, like there's there's a lot of talent within that, and then they the mixture of having even um, Kovacic and Pulisic. Is it Pulisic? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's cold. He's different. I like him, and I've I, I watched the an interview with Lampard, and Lampard said that like, he feels that Pulisic is more effective than was more effective than Hazard, and I was like, oof, like, you really want to say that? And he was like, yeah, in terms of how he. How he will run at, how he's more effective in terms of running at um, the the opposition, you know, creating chances, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
So, like, obviously, there's still a bit, I'm still a bit, you know, because I'm still a, a Hazard fan, but I like the team. I like what they, what they represent in terms of that English core, and I just hope he sticks to it. If he adds to it in terms of getting chill well at left back, oof, that would be a crazy, crazy. We already talked about them getting Timo Werner, and then they've already... Yeah. Already, them men have signed already. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Like, we've already got them, so that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Like that, that team is looking disgustingly good. They'll definitely be title contenders um, within the next three years, I believe. So. If Lampard's smart, he goes for Dinia instead of Chilwell because Chilwell cannot defend. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, Ch- Chelsea's defense is already higgy anyway. Chilwell's good. And Chilwell, even Leicester fans will say it. Attacking, obviously, he's a great attacking left back but he's apparently really bad and I've seen it he's not great defensively whereas yeah. I feel like Dinia is more and I think the thing with him as well they're more, he's more balanced so you've got Dinia on one side Reece James the other side and then figure out that defence and Kepa who won't like Kepa's rubbish but not many formats can even defend in this day and age I mean Chelsea Kepa, obviously re- relatively in it relatively because yeah. Yeah, yeah it depends I don't know and then it depends under what, what manager maybe Brendan Rodgers yeah. wasn't coaching him that well Defensively, maybe Lampard might know how to do it. They might have seen yeah. it. So, to be fair, I think that I think that Chelsea, obviously, you can see that there's, they're very inconsistent, but you can see that there's something there. Mm-hmm. And with the two signings that they've just made, like Kwame saying, like I, I agree, the next two three years, maybe even a bit sooner, mm-hmm. I think they'll be tight because they have they have the the striker that they've just signed. Um, I think he scored like thirty something goals in, in yeah. four games or something, and that's that's amazing. Mm-hmm. And then you've got um, their winger that they just bought. What's his name? Ziyech. Yeah, yeah. Ziyech. Yeah. yeah, from that's, that's, another, that's another player that can um, that can do big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that now that you can say that's a tomorrow's two point oh or something, yeah, 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 but yeah. that. That that Ings one. <laughs> but, but I think that where Chelsea are finding a bit of maybe the, the identity struggle is who do they play in midfield? Who's going to be their three midfield generals or maybe two? I don't know what it's because they've got quite a few midfielders. Obviously, you have someone like. Um, Rubens Loftus Cheek, who's just come back from injury. Now, for me, I like Rubens Loftus Cheek. I think that I would tell him to go on loan for a season to I get thought- back to things and then bring him back. Um, Tammy Abraham's getting a lot of slack. He's getting a lot of a lot of um, people cussing him. Alarm. He's like what? He's still twenty years old or twenty one. No. Give him. You know what I'm trying to say? Give him time to, to, to develop and find and find his game because before before this little drop, Tammy Abraham was banging in goals. Everyone was trying to, you know, before, before in the beginning of the season that Tammy Abraham was banging in goals and, and this is where the agenda was. No, I'm not, I'm not saying anyone here, but I'm just talking about in general where when yeah. you're banging goals, there was a whole of Rashford and Tammy Abraham, you know what I'm trying to say? So, yeah. obviously, that agenda, since January or something, isn't it? That's the issue. So say that again, Lola. Apparently, he hasn't scored since like January. That's the, that's what they complained about. And to be fair, that's that's fine. I mean, that like, for a twenty-one-year-old or twenty-year-old, that's going to happen. You're going to find inconsistencies there. So I think that you're going to have to give him time to find himself, to find his game. Um, and I think playing for someone like Chelsea, it's a big club. So you're going to have to, you know, learn of others, learn of learn of Giroud. When this uh, Weimar guy is coming in, learn of him as well. So I think he has. To- up his game though. I think he's the same age as Werner and I think the issue is with Tammy is that I think also contracts so it's the case of if he doesn't okay. sign yeah because it's, it's a whole thing about how I think he wants more big man if I was Tammy Abraham the piece that you're getting now I will sign and keep the same piece because <laughs> again where is he going to go you know what that's, yeah. that's it because yeah. Tammy Abraham if we're not careful, you'll end up in McDonald's. That's where you'll find yourself. If you're not, it's the truth. Like, my mm-hmm. thing is that with these young ballers, yeah, is that I get that there's peas in the game. And by all means, get your money. I want you to get your money, be rich, yeah. 
But if your if your game is not backing up the 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 um, wage, you're gonna get you're gonna get slated. That mm. like, people gonna get on you. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say. So I think for me, like all that whole thing of contracts and stuff like that, get that sorted out quickly and focus on football. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, Apart from that, true. Chelsea, I think, very good place. Yeah. They're fine. Get a new defense. Yeah. Uh-huh. They get defense. I still don't trust that defense. They're getting penetrated by West Ham and them, man. And you want to be serious? It's true. It's well, West, true. Ham, West Ham has always been their bogey team. It's always been their bogey team. Double. You want to be there's, there's a double over them this season. Yeah. Not twice. Always... <laughs>